Good morning, students. I hope you remember in our last class we were talking about the dynamics of uniform circular motion. I have already briefed that if a body is moving along a circular path, especially uniform circular path, then only the centripetal force will be acting, and that force will be acting always towards the center of the circular path. A pseudo force, we have talked about the pseudo force that is centrifugal force, which is also assumed to be acting, which is equal and opposite to the centripetal force, and it will be acting in the opposite to the centripetal force. That also we have discussed. These things have been discussed. Keeping in view of this dynamics of the uniform circular motion, our today's discussion is here. Motion of a vehicle on a curved level road. Very practical situation. Practical situation. Suppose there is a curved level road. It is a level road. Level road means completely horizontal. It's a curved level road. And on that road, a vehicle is moving. Here, the vehicle is on the turning. Dear students, please consider this vehicle as you just see either you consider it it is the rear side of the vehicle or the front side of the vehicle don't consider the side of the vehicle i hope you understand it is either the front side or the rear side obviously either the vehicle is coming this way or it is coming that way going that way visualize it like this then on this side there will be a pair of wheels on this side also there will be a pair of wheels. This pair of wheels are giving the normal reaction R1. These, this pair of wheels are giving the normal reaction R2. And it will be balanced by, you know, it's a contact force. It's balanced by the weight mg of the vehicle. Very clear. Whenever, I think you might have experienced, whenever a vehicle always vehicle goes along the turning of a road, level road, it has a tendency to move outward. The vehicle has a natural tendency to move outward. That's why the frictional force will be definitely in the inward direction. This is the center of the uh, this path. This is the radius we can say from here to here up to this mark. We are considering the radius of this path and F1 is for this pair of wheels, F2 for this pair of wheels, the total frictional force that is acting that will be towards the center because again I tell you vehicle has a tendency to go outward. Fine. Keeping in mind all these things, what we can say, what will happen. Definitely, when it is moving like this, then the frictional force provides the necessary centripetal force. You can note it down. The frictional force provides the necessary centripetal force. Because we have seen, whenever a vehicle is moving or whenever a body is moving on a circular path, the real force is the centripetal force. Centripetal force must be there. So, there should be some source of the centripetal force which will be which will be providing the centripetal force what is providing the what centripetal is provided by what it is provided by it is provided by the frictional force it means what the frictional force should be either greater than or at least equal to either greater than or at least equal to frictional force should be either greater than or equal to the centripetal force okay that means we can say frictional force should be either greater than or equal to centripetal force like this that means we can say uh, f1 plus f2 that is should be greater than or equal to centripetal force mu okay mu mg according to the law of friction mu mg should be greater than 
or equal to the centripetal force here it is cancelled so v square by r should be less than or equal to mu g or v square should be less than or equal to mu r g or v should be less than or equal to root mu r g this is the condition if i say that frictional force must provide the necessary centripetal force so the frictional force should be greater than or at least equal to the centripetal force we are giving this i think this is coming from the law of friction mu mg that is actually it should be mu into r1 plus r2 r1 plus r2 is equal to mg you can write one more step here you can write mu r1 plus mu r2 okay should be greater than or equal to okay then you can say here look we can write this then you can say mu times r1 plus r2 that is equal to mg and we are getting this what important conclusion we are getting we are getting in order that the vehicle should go safely along this turn along this turn what should happen the vehicle the velocity or the speed of the vehicle should be less than our maximum value should be equal to mu rg that is that is it means it means v max should be equal to root mu r g this is a very important point see v max maximum speed it should pick up that should be this so that it will go safely otherwise it should be less than this value it means there is an optimum limit of its speed when it is moving along the turning if it exceeds this value then what will happen there may be a chance of overturning of the vehicle in that case there may be the overturning of the vehicle understand so in order that overturning can be avoided it should be there this is the main condition for the movement of the vehicle along a curved path all right now we shall see what are the technical problems and accordingly again we shall discuss some more things in the next lecture all right